Hey guys, Dr. Dex here. Today I'm gonna talk to you about grabbable or graspable hand railing on a deck and why do you need it? Why, why the big deal? How come I can't just do whatever I want whenever I want? Well, first of all, if you like this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, please. We really appreciate it. And second, you can't always do what you want uh, when you're following the rules. Right? So this has to do with uh, international building code. You're always gonna wanna check your local building codes as well. Where I live and where I'm from, when you build a staircase, you have to have a continuous, graspable handrail that's no larger, I believe, than a two inch diameter that you can grab continuously all the way up a staircase. So why is that? Because that's for safety. Usually it has to terminate into a post there's different ways to do that. And sometimes on commercial projects, it's required to have a J hoop or a loop that actually comes down and around and then terminates back into the post as well. We didn't have to do that on this particular install. This is for residential. The building inspector was cool as long as we terminated our hand railing on each side into the post. As you can see, the middle of this railing run, the center post protrudes through the top of the rail. So this is not considered grabbable or graspable. It's too big, it's too bulky, it's nice, it looks good, but you can't grab it like this. This is unacceptable for a grab rail and it's not continuous. Even if the inspector was cool or, or not cool, I'm not gonna say that they're cool if it is let you do whatever you want. That's not a cool inspector. A cool inspector does his job and he interprets the code the way he interprets the code. Now, I might interpret the code differently than the building inspector does, but he does it professionally for a living, so usually I need to cater to whatever his interpretation of the code is, and usually when I do that, we get along great. There's hardly ever an issue, and sometimes I, I knock this kind of stuff out as far as the inspector goes. We have what's called a framing inspection, which is about halfway through the building process. So that framing inspection, I can come to the inspector while he's here and say, hey man, I wanna do this matching black, continuous graspable hand railing, and I wanna terminate it into the post on a 90. He goes, that's great, that'll work, I'm, I'm good with that. I'll say, do I have to put an ugly J out in front of this or a hoop? And he kind of smiles, he's like, no, you don't have to do that. I know what you're talking about. He says, it's residential, we're good. We're good with just terminating into the post. I'm like, awesome. So I verbally already talked to the building inspector about it. He's good with it. So now on final, when he comes and looks at it, he knows that we've already agreed that this is how I was gonna finish this. So basically this one grabbable rail has a termination point at the bottom post and a termination point at the top post. And then in the middle, because the rail has to remain continuous, we have a bracket that mounts to the center post and then comes up and then it's screwed to the bottom of the grabbable rail, so it's still continuous. There's no breaks in this. Now, if this was any longer than this, we would have had to have spliced it, and that's where I would terminate my splice somewhere on one of these brackets. So I had one fastener in each end of the splice, and then it would continue its run, and there'd be a, a seam right there somewhere in the run, because these rails only come so long. I think these are 104 inches. I was able to use this rail. I only had to cut like an inch and a half off of it. So I got lucky on that one. So I don't have any splices through the middle of this rail. So the other thing that you need to know about these grabbable handrails, they have to be put to a specific height. If you don't put them to a specific height, you might fail inspection. It has to be between 34 and 38 inches above the tread nosing. So here's my tread nosing. I'm level, and if I look down, I'm 34 and three quarters, okay? So if I was a little lower, I wouldn't pass code. I'm actually closer to 35 inches, if I'm being honest. I'm well within our 34 to 38 inches from tread nosing height for that grabability that you need for your inspector. So this is really sturdy. You're not gonna be able to rip it off the posts or anything like that. If it's needed in an emergency, you're definitely gonna be able to grab onto it. There's an aluminum insert inside of this 
plastic sleeve or composite sleeve that keeps this very sturdy. So uh, it looks great. It matches the rail system really well. It's round just like the pickets are, so it has a nice look to it. There's a beauty cap that snaps on over the fasteners. So basically what you're doing is when this is off, which they're hard to get off, so I'm not gonna be able to take it off, but you would pull this out of the way, install your fasteners, and then you bring this in and you snap it in. And it's meant to be difficult to remove because you don't want it just falling off anytime during the seasons with thermal expansion and contractions and all that stuff, you want it to stay put. So I hope that explains a little bit about graspable handrails. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified when we're putting out new content. Don't forget to leave a comment below. Let me know if you've ever uh, experienced these or when and why and how they work in your region. If you've ever been tagged on something uh, or a correction notice. Also, leave us a comment below and let me know about it. I'd like to hear where uh, what's going on around the nation and let's uh, let our subscribers uh, read some of those comments, guys. Thanks for watching this video. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.